Welcome to Life Conversations with Senior Helpers, the podcast that takes you on a heartfelt journey through the art of aging gracefully. Join our hosts, Christina Chartrand and David Chandler, as they engage in candid and compassionate discussions about both the joys and challenges of growing older. Tune in to gain valuable tips, expert advice, and essential resources that empower you or your loved ones to embrace the beauty in every stage of life. Let's embark on these enlightening conversations together. Here are your hosts, David and Christina. Hi, this is Christina Chartrand and David Chandler with Life Conversations with Senior Helpers. We're so glad to have you on this week's episode. Yes, and this week we're going to be talking about Parkinson's. And uh, this month is Parkinson's Awareness Month. So uh, we're excited to share with our listeners about what is Parkinson's, what are some of the common signs and symptoms, how is Parkinson's diagnosed, what are some ways that we can help support and treat loved ones and talk a little bit about what is Parkinson's month and why is it important? That is great. I'm excited about this. I'm excited to talk about it. We get lots of questions around it. So let's uh, first start out with our first question, David. What is Parkinson's disease? Yeah, so we're going to do a very high level overview of what is Parkinson's. We're not going to get into a lot of the scientific specifics, medical information, but uh, overall, a good definition of Parkinson's is that it's a neurodegenerative uh, disorder that affects movement. And it's caused by a lack of dopamine. And dopamine is the neurotransmitter in the brain that helps coordinate movement. And so when your brain uh, is lacking that dopamine, and you're not able to control your movement as well as you were previously, that's what leads to those symptoms that we commonly see with, uh, with people that have that diagnosis of Parkinson's. Oh, really interesting. Yeah. Uh, so Christina, what are, what are some of the common symptoms of Parkinson's? Well, I, I like to always talk about when I think about Parkinson's disease is, is two types of motor symptoms as well as non-motor symptoms. And typically when uh, someone is first diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, it's the motor symptoms that people probably recognize first. The first one well, I'm going to talk about is a tremor. Um, a lot of people, that's probably the number one people th symptom that people think about as far as a tremor. And typically it starts on from one side of the body and goes to the other side. So it may start on your hand and your arm and may move to the other limbs um, as well as it can happen in your in your legs and feet as and and in your head as well um, another symptom of parkinson's is what we call rigidity um, and that's kind of stiffness in your joints so you can think of any joint that you might have from shoulders to elbows to wrists is where you're having that stiffness um, the other is what i call bradykinesia which is slow movement and this one's kind of interesting because a lot of people don't really see it at first. It's someone who is, you know, maybe doing a task and they're doing it at a pace that is much slower than, than they're used to doing it. And so it's usually kind of a, a symptom that people would, would make, begin to notice. And the last one when it comes to kind of those motor symptoms is balance. Um, you know, when we're losing our balance and coordination, um, unsteady on our feet, maybe fe falling, maybe you, you are falling and feeling like you're, that sense of falling would be another one of those um, motor symptoms. There are many non-motor symptoms. I'm not going to go in, into all of them because there are so many, but some of the non-motor symptoms might be things like um, anxiety depression, um, also some dementia that people may see, also incontinence might be a, another one of those. So that's typically what you're seeing um, when it comes to some of those basic symptoms when it comes to Parkinson's disease. Yeah. And something that, that's interesting about Parkinson's is there's actually uh, no conclusive test to diagnose Parkinson's. A lot of times when we go to the doctor, sometimes it can actually take a little bit to reach that diagnosis of Parkinson's because doctors are going to rule out other things that may be contributing to uh, those symptoms that you're having. And so when you go to the doctor, 
uh, the doctor is going to take your medical history. They may do some neurological exams. They may do some imaging studies. Uh, but there is no conclusive test that you can actually just give and say this is Parkinson's. Yeah, it is very interesting. Um, and I think that's what happens for so many that there are actually a lot of people who are in the early stages of Parkinson's that are undiagnosed because it's masking or looking like something else. So for example, that rigidity might look like arthritis. So you're thinking, oh, that's 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 not what I have. So it, it really brings up a good point. And also if you have any one of these symptoms is to really check out with your primary care and share that information with them. Yeah. I know I have some friends that have uh, tremors or rigidity, mm-hmm. not Parkinson's. It's mm-hmm. just something that they've they've experienced. So just if you're having that symptom, it may not be something that you need to worry about. That is this a, a diagnosis that I may have, but it is really important to go and talk to your primary care doctor. They may make a referral for you uh, to go see a neurologist and to rule out anything that may be happening. So, yeah, really, really good point. Yeah. Um, so another question comes up, well, how are, how do people treat Parkinson's disease? Yeah, we were actually <laughs> laughing about this uh, before as we were preparing for the episode. And if any of our listeners have a definitive and you pronounce this, uh, one of the most common medications, the most common medication for treating Parkinson's is carbidopa. To me, it's levodopa. I was, I was saying levodopa. Yeah. So if any of our listeners, we actually did some other research. We listened to pronunciations on the internet. And there is a mix of, uh, if you go and you listen, there's people that say it's levodopa. Ooh. Some people say it's levodopa. Uh, that, that was really interesting. As we were talking about this, I, I said to Christina, I was like, it's levodopa. I said, no, like, it, it's levodopa. I, for the past six years, I've been saying levodopa. Yeah. So but. I'm not sure if the, maybe this is like a regional thing, you know, Coke, pop. I, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah. So, well, if anybody knows, please let us know so we yeah. can set us straight. But yeah. so that that is the most common medication that's used to treat Parkinson's is carbidopa, levodopa. It helps to uh, have the brain have that that dopamine that it needs to control movement. And it's really important if you have a loved one that is taking this for Parkinson's, you'll know that it's really critical that they take this medication generally it's about every four hours and Mm -hmm. otherwise that that dopamine starts to decrease and they start losing control of their movement so uh, it's a great medication for helping to control those symptoms Uh, but it is really important that you take it as scheduled by your doctor yeah so like the difference we think about morning noon and you know evening as far as medications and it doesn't work that way does it it has to be the actual time right yeah um, yeah. You know what, David, I, you know, there's so much research around Parkinson's disease and so many other medications that are out there to really help and, and, and support the disease. And there's other symptoms that begin to happen as well, which may have additional medications. So, you know, one of the things that, you know, especially the people that I know with Parkinson's is when you're feeling something, you're, you know, is to get out there and say it, don't live with it, to go and talk with your neurologist, talk with your primary care and say, this is how I'm feeling because it's constantly changing. And um, doctors are very aware of that as they're gonna maybe needing to change the medications, the amount of medication, the timing of medication. So it, it's important to, uh, to constantly be communicating with your physicians. Absolutely, yeah. So, and Christina, one of the things that you're very well acknowledged <laughs> on is how uh, life lifestyle modifications and therapy can help with Parkinson's. And uh, can you talk about that? And then also tie that in with how we care for our loved ones that have had this diagnosis. Yeah, I, I am um, passionate about this because what we found is, is that exercise can really play a role in helping and reducing the symptoms. Now, it doesn't make the Parkinson's go away but it does reduce those symptoms. And so the type of exercise we're talking about is actually cardio type activity, right? Getting your heart rate up and, and doing different types of exercises that break that make that level. Um, 
There are several different programs out there. I know we're going to have our guest speakers going to talk about Rocksteady Boxing. Another one I really love is Dance for PD, mm, which is yeah. kind of a movement that you can do in a sitting position that I, that I really love. But honestly, just getting up and going um, every day is really critical because the more you sit, the more the stiffness is going sit, to sit in, the more you get up and kind of force yourself to go and, and move, um, the, you're, you're going to feel better. And so it's really important when I feel like lifestyle is also just kind of thinking about uh, food intake. Um, the types of food that you have, um, ask the questions to your primary care or your neurologist around protein. Um, typically protein and the carvadopa, levodopa. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good to have together, to have some space between the two. And so that's just a question that you may want to ask your, your primary care. But I really believe in an active lifestyle can really make a difference in just some so many levels about how you're feeling. Um, also support groups. I really believe in connecting with other people who are experiencing the same thing as well um, can be so impactful in how you're feeling on a day to day. Absolutely. And Christina, let's talk about Parkinson's uh, Awareness Month and why is this month so important? I, you know, I love that we have a whole month to talk about Parkinson's because I think this is really an opportunity to do several things. One is you've got national organizations that are typically raising money around this month. And this money goes into care. It goes into research to find a cure. It's all those really good things that are important. But I also like to take it to another level. Think about the people who have Parkinson's disease. This is a great opportunity to reach out with other people who are experiencing the same thing. And those, your friends, your family, your community is to an opportunity for you all to connect um, and learn more and to be able to support each other. Uh, absolutely. And and I'm, I'm wondering, and I, I can think of, we're about to uh, release our next Senior Helpers Spotlight story that's going mm -hmm. to be uh, focusing on one of our clients that has a diagnosis of uh, of Parkinson's. Christina, are there any uh, specific examples that you can think of, of times where we've been able to go in and support clients with Parkinson's or, uh, or just have a big impact on their life? Yeah, for sure. I, I think about, you know, a lot of times when people are diagnosed with Parkinson's, once they get the medication kind of figured out, they're good for a while. They're living the same life that they've had, um, no really big changes. But as the disease progresses, um, it gets harder. It gets harder for the person who has Parkinson's disease, but it also gets hard for the family as well. And this is where some extra support can come into the home to you know, provide that relief. Um, provide, like if you're worried about your loved one being alone or falling, to have somebody, a friend, you know, a home care company like Senior Help or somebody coming into the home to be with them so that you can let your spouse go out and be able to go to the grocery store and, and do things with friends um, so that they're not feel so, you know, stuck in the home and not being able to do anything, do anything else. But I've also seen Parkinson's, you know, we're having somebody else come into the home, a different person, the person, your, your family caregiver who's been caring for you can br bring a whole new perspective, right? We can go in and we can look at any durable medical equipment that might be needed, changing the environment to make it easier to maneuver around. We know small tight spaces can cause that festination, which is kind of getting stuck when you're walking and you can't keep going. Um, so being able to evaluate the environment and make some changes to make it easier for that person to be able to, to move around the home. That's where I've seen some really positive impacts for not only the family caregiver, but also the person living with, with Parkinson's. Yeah, I think uh, tied in with that is what you were mentioning earlier with the quality of life. Think about Rocksteady Boxing, which we're gonna have our, our guest speaker coming up on our next episode. Uh, we'll hope you turn, you'll turn it, tune in for that. It's going to be really fun having that quality of life and having those things to look forward to and know that, uh, even as, as, as it's progressing, as that, uh, that disease is progressing, staying active, uh, keeping engaged can really help, um, to, to slow the progression or, um, continue to have that excellent quality of life. 
Yeah, there's also some great organizations out there that I always like. The Michael J. Fox Foundation, um, if you're always looking for the latest, greatest, what's being uh, created when it comes to finding something to, for the cure or what new drug that potentially might be available, um, I think they're always on top of it. They've got a lot of research behind it. And the Parkinson's Foundation, I love to go to that site. They provide a lot of one free advice, but also free stuff too, like really cool stuff. Like one of the things I think that I think is amazing is a kind of a hospital kit. So when you're going in, let's say that you, the person with Parkinson's has to go into the hospital for, for whatever reason. Well, it's kind of almost like an educational tool for the, the nursing staff there to understand what these symptoms are and the importance of medication, um, things to think about, and it's it's great. And those those kinds of resources are all free from that organization. Yeah. Well, uh, any, any parting thoughts for our listeners as we uh, celebrate Parkinson's Awareness Month? Well, I would just like to say, if you do know somebody with Parkinson's disease, and a lot of people do, just do one thing this month. So it's either reaching out to your friend who has Parkinson's or um, possibly donating if you can to an, to an organization. Um, they typically do walks as well or and or sharing or learning a little more about a support group that's local in your area. Just touch one person. Awesome. All right. We're excited for this month and and how we can uh, educate people, join in the, in the research and support for Parkinson's. So uh, we hope that you'll also join in with us and we'll, we'll see you on our next episode. All right. Looking forward to that. All right. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Life Conversations with Senior Helpers. We hope this discussion has inspired you to embrace aging gracefully and independently. For more resources, tips, and expert insights, please visit us online at seniorhelpers.com. Stay connected, keep learning, and continue cherishing the moments that make life truly special. We're here to support you every step of the way. Until next time.